It's October 21st, 2015, the day that Doc Brown and Marty McFly go to the future. The future has arrived. And here in Vancouver, we're going to see how Vancouverites celebrate the iconic date. First stop, a screening at a makeshift Cafe 80s in Kitsilano. All right, Doc, what's going on, huh? Where are we? When are we? We're descending toward Hill Valley, California, on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? It's super cool that when when art and life come together like that, and I think uh, if anybody that's a fan of the trilogy, on some level, you've kind of been wondering about October 21st, 2015, and here it is, so we can sort of compare the vision of 1980s future to the reality of 2015. The thing that's so funny about Back to the Future, looking, looking back on the whole trilogy, is when you think about 1985, and then they go back to 1955, it feels like they're going to 10 decades ago, it feels like a whole other world. The difference between 55 and 85 seems much greater to me than 85 and 2015. Storyline of uh, Goldie for mayor, and he's like, Ma, I'll be mayor. And then here you are, you think in 2015, America's just, we have a, there's a black president. I mean, it, like those kinds of things, I think are part of the reason why people cling to Back to the Future is because it got so many little things right and it was able to comment um, in 1985 on so many of the changes that had happened in a, in a funny, reverential way. So we are, we're screening um, Back in Time, which uh, is a documentary about the film and it'd be about people that love the film and the impact of the film on October 26th, which is the day that Marty travels back to 1955. It really is, for me, and arguably, the greatest time travel movie ever put on film. If we would have done something different at one moment, would it have changed our whole lives for the better? I think it's the best thing that I've ever written. I mean, along with Bob, of course. Zemeckis and Gale really found lightning in a bottle. You probably have one of those in you in a lifetime. Lightning in a bottle tends to stick around for a long time. Yeah, so the local connection for me is really Michael J. Fox. I, he's a guy that's always inspired me, and he's a guy that's from Burnaby. And so, you know, for myself, when I got the idea of approaching the director when I first saw the Kickstarter come out for Back in Time, um, I really just wanted to say thank you so much for making a film that's talking about the 30 years later of the impact that it's having on not just people like myself, but everyone else in the world. I actually kind of connected a little bit with George McFly. He's a guy that was an outcast. He had big dreams. He had big goals of being this person that no one else thought that he could be. People were inspired by the message, the message of you're in control of of your own destiny. And you know, once you hear that as a young kid, even as an uh, adult, you, you really think to yourself, wow, this is something that I could do myself. And that's actually what got me inspired about quantum physics, science, all these things. Something that seems so trivial to other people uh, made a huge impact on my life and it continues to make impacts on people's lives uh, everywhere. So here we are, October 21st, 2015. Where did you think you'd be at this time when you first saw the film years ago? Well, when I saw part two, honestly, I thought, hey, you know, like, I want one of those hoverboards. And uh, also flying cars. I don't see any flying cars here, do you guys? I thought we'd be on, like, flying cars by now. No, not really, no. It's, you know what, it seemed uh, possible. It seemed possible when you were watching the movie. A bit disappointed, honestly. Really? Yeah. Do tell. I expected a lot of more uh, futuristic stuff, Yeah. you know jetpacks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. When you see um, older 80s movies or 90s movies that they show futuristic stuff in those movies, yeah. we're still way behind that time. I saw it for the first time in the early 90s and I'm kind of sad we don't have like the skateboard thing, but eh, we'll get there. What, was your what do you think is the, the, the most accurate prediction that Back to the Future made? So far I guess it has to be the Cubs. I mean the style, I'm really glad that it's not there. <laughs> So there you have it. Lots of Vancouver connections to Back to the Future and Back to the Future Day. October 21st, 2015, soak it up. The future is here. <laughs>